Welcome back. I am Steve and this is Barn Sprite number three. We're still working towards getting this car drivable, so let's get right into it. Let's start with this. I got my new keys from Triple C. I gave them the code that is listed on the ignition switch and they cut these keys for me. So if this fits, I should be able to, for the first time, start the car without hot wiring it. Well, let's see if it fits, it goes in. It does turn it, it turns pretty hard. It's also turning the lights at the same time. But it looks like it does turn the ignition key. I just now noticed this is not the correct speedometer for this car. This car should have a speedometer that looks like this tachometer. There should be a little ignition light down here instead of the high beam indicator. I guess I could watch the fuel gauge, see if it moves when I turn the key. It does not. So I don't think that's actually turning the ignition on. So we'll need to take a look at this wiring real quick. I just removed my switch that I had connected to the battery and then this side of the coil. And there was not another wire hooked up to that. I imagine that this is probably the power wire that goes to the coil. But I'd like to test this first before I hook it up. The colors on all the wiring are faded, so a wire diagram is not going to do any good. So I'll just have to test these myself. Now I'll go turn the ignition switch on, and if this is the correct wire, we should see 12 volts up here. So we don't have 12 volts, so either that is the wrong wire, or there is something else that's wrong. And I do see something that's wrong right away. On the early sprites, they did not have this type of battery. They had a top post battery where a screw actually went through the top of these connectors and that's what held it to the battery. Well, on this side, the hot side, which happens to be negative because this is a positive ground car, there's a second wire that should attach to this. This wire here, this goes down to the mechanical starter solenoid. It's just cable actuated. And there's a second wire that should be hooked up and that actually gives power to the inside of the car. You can see this is not connected at all. In fact, there's no end on it at all. So I need to put a ring terminal on this. I might even need to extend it so that I can connect it over here. Or alternatively, I could also connect it down here. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll do the test again. What I decided to do was extend this wire because it wasn't quite long enough to reach over here without making this too tight. So I added a little length here and connected it to the hot side of the battery. Now let's go turn the key and see what happens. Okay, I saw the fuel gauge move. So we are getting ignition now. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but also when I turn the, the light switch now, we get a backlight coming on on the gauge. Let's leave this on and go check our wire. We have 12 volts on our wire now, so when I turn off the key, that should go to zero, and we'll know we have the correct wire. The key is off and it did go to zero, so I'm gonna connect this up to the coil, and we should be good to go to start the car from inside. Because this car has a mechanical fuel pump and I don't actually want the engine to run for a long period of time, I'm just going to give it a little shot of starter fluid. That way we can hear if the ignition fires off. That's all I want to test. Make sure we're getting power to the ignition and it's working correctly. Ignition is on. You can't tell it with the light, but the high beam light is on. It's working as an ignition light. Then I'll pull the starter cable. It looks like our ignition switch does work. Before I can run the engine for an extended period of time, I will need to put in a hose here on the heater valve that goes to the heater, as well as a hose from here to the heater. I did order the correct bent hose that goes right here. For over here, I just cut a regular length of straight hose, and I just grabbed myself some hose clamps. I'm going to put straight water in this for now one, so that I can check for leaks, and two, so that I can drain this out and flush the coolant system. I'll have to fire it up and run it for a little bit to fill it any further. 
I also did buy this new radiator cap to replace this nasty old one. Be careful when you're buying radiator caps for your old British cars because this height right here is usually different than the ones you would get from Napa or someplace like that. So when you're putting it on there, it doesn't actually push down here on the bottom and actually seal up. So you want to make sure that your distance right here is correct. You can see this old one was probably not the correct cap, but the new one is much taller, which should actually push down on there inside there and seal it up. I can feel that getting really tight. The ignition system on this car is in a really sad state. You can see the insulator is completely gone from this wire. This is the original coil. And even though it has this modern boot on it, this is a screw in type wire here. That wire does not look in the best of shape. And then the cap is of the original type where the wires come out of the side. Since all of this stuff is in pretty bad shape, I'm going to replace all of this. I did get all of these things from Moss. I really like the cobalt spark plug wires and I'm going to be changing the distributor cap to a top entry cap. So the wires are going to be conventional type wires that come in from the top instead of the side. Bought a new rotor as well. And because I'm using standard style spark plug wires, I also bought a sport coil. That way I have the correct type of connection on the coil because this one is set up for the screw-in type wires and not the push-on. So I'll need to change this coil out. I now have everything installed, the new wires, the cap and rotor, and the new coil. The only thing to do now is start the engine back up, take the car outside, let it warm up, and then I can top the radiator off. And then next time we can really concentrate on trying to get this car back on the road. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and let me know. find one minor leak I forgot to tighten the nuts that hold the heater valve on so I'll just tighten that up everything's looking good <laughs> 